So, I've got a new toy. Uh, a Pentium 2 just arrived, um, which I ordered a while ago, and, you know, while we're all locked inside at home, I thought it would be a good chance to do some builds and test some stuff. So, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to test this Pentium 2 that I picked up, uh, make sure it still works. I've got some other parts coming, and I'm going to do a build uh, for a Pentium 2. So, um, back when I was a kid, uh, Pentium 2s uh, had just come out. Um, I really wanted one. I remember drooling over uh, Pentium 2s in the PC World magazines that I used to have. Um, I always wanted a uh, Pentium 2. Um, I think I had a Pentium 100 hand-me-down at that point, and that was my main computer. It was okay for some DOS gaming, but you know, seeing the stats and the, the reviews of the Pentium 2s in the magazines at the time, I really wanted one. But unfortunately, I didn't have any money to get it, so I missed out. But now, I've got my very own Pentium 2, so let's take a look. Okay, so this is the board. It's an Intel 440BX, um, which I believe is a really good motherboard to have for these. Um, and it has a Pentium 2 400 megahertz uh, CPU on it in the slot one configuration. Uh, this board that I got came with 64 meg of RAM. It is actually a PC133 speed. Um, I believe this board only supports PC100. Um, so, you know, it's, I can put that in a Pentium 3 if I wanted to. Um, I do have some more RAM coming, so this only has 64 meg. Um, and I also have a video card, um, an AGP card that I picked up to test this with. So today we'll plug it in, power it up, uh, make sure it works, check the BIOS settings, uh, and then yeah, we'll just make sure it works, and then in a future video we'll do a build with this. Okay, so this is the video card that I picked up for this. This is an ASUS uh, NVIDIA River TNT2. Um, unfortunately it is the crappy M64 version. Um, I'd really love to put a TNT2 Ultra in this machine, but I can't afford them because they're so stupidly expensive um, and quite hard to get. I guess collectors really love those uh, Ultra cards. Um, this one only has 32 megabytes of RAM, um, but it is a TNT2. Um, so we'll be putting this card in and we'll be using this in the final build when we get to it. Okay, so the power supply we'll be using today is this spare light power 650. Um, that I have laying around. Um, these boards just take a standard ATX, so you just use the 20 pin minus the extra four. So we can plug that in here. Um, I don't have any hard drives or anything to plug into this today, so we'll just be doing a BIOS test. So we'll put the AGP card in. That's that. And we'll put some, plug some video into this. Alright, let's fire this thing up and see if it works. That's a good start. We have the motherboard manufactured by Intel Corporation splash screen. I can't say I've ever seen that before. I have never used a 440BX motherboard before, so I wonder if you can turn that off. I always turn the splash screens off. I'm not a huge fan. Okay, so we have a Phoenix BIOS um, version 4, release 6. Um, the 440BX-2 motherboard, Intel Pentium 2 processor at 400 megahertz, and that is 64 megabytes of system RAM, but you can't see the left side of the screen because it's cut off on this great LCD screen that I'm using. So, date and time settings, password checksum, CMOS bad. I have a feeling that the CMOS battery in this is flat. Uh, that's okay, it's a CR2032, so that's easy to change. So let's have a look in the setup. Okay. Yep, Pentium 2, 400 megahertz, 512 kilowatts of cache RAM, 64 meg installed. This is definitely not the right date, so let's test this. It is the March the 30th, 2020. And the time, oh, we don't need to set the time, that's okay. Plug and play OS, no, I don't have an OS installed. Let's have a look at the peripherals. So, serial ports, yes, we have serial ports. Uh, legacy USB support, don't need to worry about that for now. IDE configuration, we don't have any IDE drives uh, plugged in currently. We don't have any floppy drives plugged in currently. Event logging, you can view it. 
So CMOS checks on memory and it can't find the floppy drive, of course. Everything else looks okay. Video configuration, EGP memory size up to 64 meg. We've only got a 32 meg card in there. Uh, and obviously default primary video adapter is AGP. Uh, we can set our interrupts and our memory configurations, which we don't need to do right now. Uh, security, we don't need a password on this. Power management is enabled. Um, boot, diagnostic screen. Let's turn that on and have a look. Let's turn off quick boot. See if that gets rid of this flash screen. Um, that's disabled. Yep, everything else looks fine. We could boot it off a USB drive, but I don't want to do that today. So let's save that and see what happens. Hopefully this gets rid of that Intel splash screen. And it does. Excellent. Okay, we do the RAM count. Keyboard detected. Drive A error to be expected. And then obviously it won't boot because there's nothing to boot from. Alright, let's see if we can save our CMOS settings. So if I turn off the power, I'll, um, I'll leave that off for a minute and then we'll come back. Well, the splash screen's back. So it looks like the battery's dead. Let's see. Yep. Same problem as before. Date and time. Password checksum. CMOS checksum bad. So this CR2032 battery is definitely dead. So that'll need to be replaced. Um, we'll do that in a future video when we do a build. Alright guys, that's it. We've tested the board, we know it works, we can do a build, I'm waiting for a few extra parts to come and I'll get a new battery. Um, then when we do the build video, you can see it again. So thanks for watching. Remember, if you like what I do, uh, like the video, subscribe, and I'll make some more videos. Thanks.